Okay, so we're going to be going over part one of the homework that I handed out during class, our structure contours, vertical cross sections, three-point problem applications. Before you start, please make sure that you have at least five copies of the map that I have attached. There's a lot of three-point problems that we're going to be doing on the map. If you can separate each three-point problem by itself, it's going to make it a lot more easier to interpret your final product. So make sure you have at least five, you'll probably want more, um, and we're going to have to have extra paper for when you do this. There's a few things you need to know about the map before we start. First off, the map that I have printed, this one, is a little bit bigger than the attachment. So all of the calculations I'm doing, they'll have different numbers, but the final result should be the same because it's all the same proportions. All right, so part one. We're going to be referring to our attached geologic map, and we're going to be talking about these formations. So there's going to be a series of massive marine sandstones lying unconformably upon older rocks. So looking at this map, we go over to here and look at the stippled rock. Everything within this unit, this is our massive marine sandstone unit within this bold line. So that's what they're referring to there. We also have three uniformly oriented sedimentary formations, A, B, and C. A is the oldest, and it's cut by a thick dike uh, patterned with dashes of mafic igneous rock. So that's going to be this really long linear feature. Uh, do note that it does go underneath our marine sandstone. So that's what we're ta they're talking about with that. And then underneath all of it, uh, unconformably below formation A is the older series of sedimentary rocks striking due north and dipping uniformly 27 degrees west and it's a, th it's a thick limestone member. One thing to keep in mind, the upper and lower surfaces of this limestone member outcrop in the two circled points. So everything pretty much in this north section, we're talking about our limestone. This is our top point of our bed, this is the lower point of the bed and this will be useful later on when we get to that section. So the first thing we have to do is prepare a structure contour map of the surface between formations A and B. Now the structure contour map is not, we didn't go over it in class, unfortunately I didn't explain it well. It's the same as a topographic map, the only difference is instead of you demonstrating topography with your contour lines, you're showing what the structure looks like. So if we have a, a dipping bed like this, but the topography is moving up and down around it, you're just drawing a map that says, okay, topography, if the bed is dipping uniformly this way, you're going to have a top topographic contour here, or structure contour here, structure contour here, structure contour here. So what I have done for this um, to kind of set up the problem is I've traced the outline of the map. So if we look at the map here, Right. This is our A unit, this is our B unit. These thick lines are denoting our contacts, so this is our C unit down here. So we're trying to figure out what the contour interval is between A and B. So I've traced out that contact. We're going to be drawing in our contour, our structure contours in here in a minute. We just have to figure out how far apart they will be spaced. Now in order to do that, we have to determine at what dip A and B are relative to each other. So this is where our first three-point problem comes in to determine the, the contour of that surface. So we're looking for a surface. Now in the video that I've posted um, where the lady's going over everything, she, picks, she already had three points picked out, which is great. We are going to do our own three points. Um, and uh, it's all... It, all that really matters is that the three points lie within the bed you're trying to figure the dip out in. So you want three points, one of high elevation, one of low elevation, and one in between. So uh, for this one, we are going to stick with a point here. Right? We know the 1100 meters crosses here. Uh, we're going to go down here. We know the 700 meter line crosses there, and somewhere in between, we've got our 900 meter 
line that's crossing here. Keep in mind it's a 100 meter contour interval and we're going to be using the scale for calculating everything. To kind of set it up like the video, right, we're going to label the highest point A, the lower point C, and this point B. Now for this first one, I'm going to show you how to do the three-point problem. For the other three-point problems, you're going to be doing it on your own. So refer to the video that I posted and refer back to this problem uh, if you need any help with that. Um, so one of the first things we have to do is set up our three-point problem. So we have the points, we connect the line. And we put in our triangle. So we know that A is at 1,100 meters. C is at 700 meters. When we want to find the height difference for our triangle, we subtract those two. So we have 1,100 minus 700. And that gives us 400 meters here. Then we know the distance, so we can measure the distance. Up here, looks like 200, 2,000 meters is just shy of three millimeters. And we've got four millimeters, so we've got 2,000, about 2,000, 100, 200, 300. So about 2,300 and 50 meters as our distance between A and C. Then we use our arctan function. So we do the arctan of 2,350 divided by 400. And that gives us an apparent dip of about 80.3 degrees. Okay. The next thing we have to do is figure out where point B would fall in terms of elevation between point A and point C. So it's a straight line going from 1100 meters down to 700 meters. Where is point B, which is at 900 meters, going to fall on this line? So we have a couple of piece of information that we know. We know the distance, the height distance between B and C. So if we draw our second triangle, we know it's 900 minus 700, which is 200 meters. And we already know the apparent dip, which is 80.3 degrees. And we're trying to figure out X, X being the distance from C along this line that a line of equal elevation to B was going to be crossing. So again, we're using our tan function. So um, we take 200 divided by the tangent of our apparent dip, 80.3. And that gives us 34.2, sorry, meters. So 34.2 meters up from C. So it's going to be kind of a tight squeeze. So we take our protractor, measure out about 30.2, and this is going to be our B prime. We then take our line, B to B prime, and we draw our fairly thick line. And remember now this is our strike. So this is two parallel lines, or a parallel line through equal elevation through our unit A. So this is going to be our strike. Um, we can do it in terms of azimuth, or you can also do it in terms of your quadrant. So if we line this up, and we're going to figure out this angle from 90. So basically this is 360, right? Or we start at zero. So we're 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So it's north 70 degrees west. I can also, well, I'll let you guys figure that out in terms of azimuth. But that's how you get the strike. 
And then we have to determine the distance 90 degrees, which would be our, our um, sorry, my crutches just fell. Anyways, so that is going to be our dip. So we want strike, 90 degrees from that is gonna be our dip. It's gonna be a super tight squeeze here as we measure. So we keep this 90 degrees and measure out to our point C, which is about one tick mark. Let me do it this way. It's about a tick and a half. So if we go up to our scale and look at what a tick and a half is, it's about 50 meters. which is what we're gonna to use to find our true dip, right? So we have our X is 50 meters, and that's our distance between our, our strike line and our C. And then we have the distance between our B prime elevation and C, which is 200. And again, we're gonna use our arctan function. So arctan of 50 divided by 200 and that gives us a true dip 14 degrees and then we have to figure out which way it's dipping because uh, it could be dipping to the northeast or the southwest but because A is higher than C then we know it has to be going off um, to the north east or at least to the east so now that we have this information our 14 degree dip for the surface between A and C I mean sorry between A and B we can then use a triangle to figure out okay if we have a hundred meter contour interval we have 14 degrees as our dip. What is going to be the contour distance that we measure on our map? So I'll let you guys do that. Then you find where our contour is. So if you look on this map, you could pick a point where you know the contour interval. So if we pick this point here, right, we know that it's got to be our 1300 contour. So if you follow this, it's 1300. So here, 1300, you draw a line that follows the strike, which we know is north 70 degrees west, so north 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 degrees west, and this is the start of your 1300 meter contour and you go downhill from there right using your x distance to separate your contours and that is producing the structure of the dip of the bed between a and b and that's the structural contour for your surface so work on that see how that goes the next problem is going to be determine the strike and dip of the unconformity below this massive sandstone. So pulling out a fresh map. Again, we're doing a three point problem. So you wanna find somewhere within here that has a high elevation, somewhere within here that has a lower elevation, and somewhere in between. You follow the, th the same steps where you determine the distance between A and C, the angles, you find out where B intersects, and that will tell you what the angle is between this unconformity and your units that are lying below it. Keep in mind that these units are uniform. So the dip here is gonna be the same as the dip here, same as the dip here. So these are all uniform. If you find the dip in one, you're gonna know the dip in the other two. In the other two. To determine the stratigraphic thickness of formations A and B, 
We already know what the dip is using our information when we were trying to figure out part or section one. So you already know the angle. At this point, all you have to do is use your trigonometric functions, right? So we know the angle, you know the height difference because you can calculate it, right, between the upper and the lower, and you can figure out um, how thick your unit is. So again, just geometric relationships. Um, construct an outcrop of the limestone member to the northeast of the lower unconformity. Uh, this outcrop must be completed on both sides of the dike. So again, you'll want a new map. We're going to be looking at the outcrop here. We're going to be drawing in what we, the outcrop is. This is the upper level. This is the lower level. We already have the beginnings of a three-point problem. right? So in order for us to do this, we need to find what the dip is or what the, the change in height is between these guys. We already know that it's striking roughly, well, we know precisely, striking north. So we draw our strike, and it's dipping 27 degrees to the west. So using that information and knowing what our height is, so our limestone can't go above 1,200 meters and it can't go below 900 meters. So where does that put it into the subsurface here? So again, if I draw just a quick topographic profile, we've got some topography here. It kind of goes into a valley topography, and then it starts to go down. So we've got topography, topography, and it starts to go down. The limestone is on both sides here. So somehow, going at about dipping at about 27 degrees, you're going to have a bed of some thickness, right? It's going to go through this, and it's going to end up on the other side of the dike. So this is your topography. This is the structure that we're working with. This is the bed. Similar problem to our first problem, right? We're trying to figure out what's going on in the subsurface, and it should ultimately end up over here. Because we're going to be drilling down through point P for our next section, a vertical hole is to be drilled at point P on the surface to intersect the upper surface of the limestone. At what depth below the ground surface will the upper limestone surface be reached? So if we do this, we're drilling P right here. We're drilling a vertical well right down there. At what elevation are you going to hit that limestone? So again, we know it's 27 degrees. We, we, should, we should be able to figure out the thickness based on the points here and here. And that will tell you how to find P. And then our final one is to draw an accurate vertical cross section along our cross section line X, X prime showing topography and all formation contacts with correct apparent dips. Remember to do this, we need our graph paper, which looks something like this. You are going to take a separate piece of paper. And everywhere the tick mark is everywhere where there's a contour line that crosses this is going to show up on your contour on your vertical cross section Keep in mind, so you want to write down the elevations. So this is 900, 1,000, 
1200, 1100, 1000, 1100, 1200, 1300, 1,300, and so on. I'm not going to finish it for the purposes of time, but you can get this idea. When you lie this, so this is the very edge, lie this on here, everywhere where this is counting, right, you're going to put a tick, so it's 900, 1,000, 1,100, 1200 1100 1100 and then you will connect the dots rough topography. This is the topographic part. The next part for completing your cross section is understanding what the dips are. So we know that C is dipping 14 degrees. We calculated that from section 1. These are all dipping 14 degrees so wherever C is crossing we're gonna draw in 14 degrees roughly. You're going to draw in what the dip is, either way, whichever one it is. Don't forget to put, if the massive sandstone, say if that's right here, just crops out right there. So that that would be what it would look like in cross section because it's only a tiny amount. You should know the the thickness of this from a previous question. Don't forget to put in the dike and then what structure is the bedding between A, B, and C and our older limestone unit making because they are not dipping the same direction. That is the basic gist for our part one for our homework. That is the only thing that we're doing for this week. Make sure you take time to do it. Please write down questions and let me know.